Hey YouTubers, you muskrat trappers. This is the uh, kayak trapper and I'm gonna make my uh, how to make my float video finally. And this is old the muskrat dog Peppy. Yeah. Anyway, uh Uh, what I make it out of is uh, I buy a piece of this foam. It comes in the big sheet, but I buy the smaller sheets, easier to deal with. It's uh, two by four by uh, I think it's uh, an inch. I buy these pine boards. They're uh, one inch by twelve inch by forty eight, and. Uh, and then I buy these, uh, I don't know what these are called, slats or something. They're eight feet long, one inch by half inch. And uh, anyway, so all you got to do is uh, mark it in half, cut it in half. Now you got your two two pieces and I do I do the sandwich on the foam for a good reason because the early models were made out of plywood and they would just went to pieces but they get flipped over and chewed to pieces literally so you want to make some floats make some good floats so they'll last and uh, so basically, you take a piece of the foam and you get it sandwiched in the board and uh, get it all sandwiched up. Something like that. Nice and pretty. And uh, then you, I like to use these three inch uh, sheetrock screws and I do four of them and uh, just, you know, pre-drill a hole um, smaller than the screw so you won't split the wood and uh, you can hand screw them in or you can be lazy like me and screw them in with the power tool but do do four screws that holds this together and uh, that that's the deck now uh, what I do then is I take those slats and uh, I uh, cut them down and uh, I kind of base the length of these you know, this is this is uh, 12 inches by uh, 24 inches. So I made these a little bit shorter. I, I think 18 inches or something. I don't remember. So there's a little bit of a room there, and uh, pre-drilled, and uh, you can nail those. I I, I tend to want to stay with screws because it holds together better nails they pull out the wood gets soaking wet and they pull out but uh, get that fastened down and then uh, and then I like to use an even smaller piece and uh, this is kind of a two two purpose thing there um, you're, you're going to use it as part of the wedge for the trap, but it also helps keep the bait in here from getting knocked out. And uh, I've done, you know, and you can use nails or screws, but pre-drill it. And then uh, I've done experimenting with all kinds of stuff. And wood is the cheapest way. I've dinked around and and use these guys 
uh, I think it's plumber's tape or whatever and uh, put it in and it works too but uh, I, I I tend to like the the wood and uh, I did several different tries I did that and so you have it where the trap fits in there and uh, like this here you got your two pieces there and the bait sets in there and then you put this piece here and I actually cut off some of that in there so when you wedge your trap in there it sticks down in there if you can see that and you wedge the trap in there underneath and uh, it steadies the trap up real good um, now there's several ways you know you can use a smaller piece of wood you know and shave on the the edge here or you can use even smaller pieces and I've kind of started going to that more and uh, I think I've got one uh, I think it's outside but anyway you know trying to make the wood stretch but anyway um, yeah th the main idea is to wedge the trap in there and then um, and I've learned from trial and error um, from actually being out there during trapping season muskrats that swim and climb up on right over the side eat the bait look at me and then jump back in the water so I, I improved the catch I doubled the catch rate by putting this this on the uh, top of it and that forces them uh, that forces them to come across the trap and you know they're little rats that like to live in tunnels so they they're not afraid of having to uh, go through the holes and stuff it forces them right across the uh, trap like this and uh, I even on some of them I've, I've put some stuff here to even block it better and it works even better I they, they don't shy away um, I suppose this also would work to keep birds out of it but I've never ever had a problem with the birds so um, I do like this wire because it's green and it doesn't get all rusty um, but yeah uh, and since and since I ha had that wire I went ahead and started putting it around the foam but I've come I've come to learn that you don't really need it just sandwiching that foam pretty much deters them from chewing on it so this is probably overkill um, here's a float here okay here's a float here and it got uh, there's a little damage there where they chew a little bit there so considerably less uh, then last year of course they they beat up the the float a little bit chewing on the wood but but as far as the foam you know my floats last year were destroyed I had to rebuild these these I think will go two three four years you know as long as they're floating they're working so uh, and then and then I do a handle for two reasons to carry it 
Um, sometimes you got to go hundreds of yards to get them down to the water. Um, and when I am in the carry mode, I put a screw in or a nail in here and here to actually hang the trap. Otherwise, they're kind of like dragging on the ground. They're hanging down there so far. But uh, it works good that way. I haven't had any problems. And I think this is the best, best way, the garden hose. I've used rope. I've used... Uh, I've used wire with the hose. Um, I had some some other stuff, but I think this is the, the stuff that'll hold up the longest. Just some old garden hose, and then uh, and then I, you know, to attach the trap, I do a a uh, eyelet screw thing, an S hook into the trap, and. Uh, you're in business. You get a muskrat, they jump in the water and they drown. Just like that. So, um, these, these, these traps are not the cheap traps, but, uh, oh, one other thing, the handle besides for carrying it's your backup for uh, you have this tied to your your stake and uh, the muskrats will chew up your rope and when they do you still are in business because you can use the handle and uh, you know the water goes up and down you're still in business you're still trapping so but uh, yeah, I I would try and just stick with 1.5s if you could, because they're the heavier trap and they work better. These the number ones I used and they work, but you need to add a freaking salmon fishing weight to it, or they'll climb back on you, float, and be sitting there waiting for you. You got to get them down in that water and keep them down, drown them. So. But anyway, uh, you know, they're, they're not exactly cheap. I probably have about maybe 10 bucks in a float. But uh, they'll be able to be used, I don't know, for how many years. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's, uh, I don't know, fifth, I got 15 floats. And whoa, yeah, that's a lot of money. But you know what? Sixteen hundred dollar fur check is a lot of money too. So you gotta make a little investment, you know. Um, make some good floats and uh, make some money. So this is a kayak trapper. I hope this satisfies the uh, the young trappers who were wanting this video. So. I'll see you out there on the trap line.